<laughs> well, first of all, welcome. Can you hear me? Okay, good. I haven't been able to check the mic yet, so. Uh, yeah, it sucks. Uh, <laughs> Honestly, um, see, I'm, I'm not like against AI as a tool. Uh, I do think um, it can be interesting for like idea genera uh, generation, but um, I do think like uh, models like stable diffusion, etc., are unethical because they're using copyrighted content uh, to train their models uh, instead of like what I would like to see is if artists' art is being used, that they get contacted, that their work get licensed, gets licensed to be used in a database. Uh, so they have control over uh, what their uh, you know, what their images get used for, uh, and if their images um, do get used, that they get compensated for it, like, based on, I don't know, like, how often their uh, their image gets gets called uh, to be used as, like, I'm not sure, like, exactly sure how the, um, um, like, how the model works in terms of, like, how it uses the images exactly. Um, but like maybe it can be compensated like Spotify, like every time uh, so a song is played in Spotify, uh, the art uh, the artist gets like a compensation. Um, and like for me, I, I don't think, I think it's inevitable that we're going to like get these AI systems. So if we have to learn to live with that, I would um, sooner see it go to some kind of licensing model um, just so people can get rewarded for like putting basically free art out there. What do you think about it? I'm guessing you have an opinion since you asked the question. Right? It's a, 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 I, I am kind of like laughing at the fact that they didn't learn from the backlash at DeviantArt. It's like they, they have to be paying attention, right? There have to be people paying attention to what's happening on like Twitter or whatever on those other websites. So how could you not expect this kind of backlash happening? Um, so it's so weird it's so tone deaf um but at least like everybody's being super super clear in the comments beneath the the announcement um it's kind of interesting that they're saying like that they were going to do a survey um because I'm, I'm i'm kind of like wondering why didn't you do the survey beforehand Instead of like announcing like, hey, we're going to put it in there um, and then do a survey afterwards. I don't know what's going on there. I'm curious to hear if they get come from with a, if they're coming with another statements and what they'll, what they'll say at that point. Are you a Clips uh, user yourself? Long-time user or no? Because 
I'm a pretty new user. Like I've had the, the software for a while. Um, I bought it like when it was on sale, I don't know, years ago. Um, and then never, never really used it until, um, until actually like making the comic. Cause it's comic tools, it's page, organi page organization and stuff. That's pretty, pretty great compared to like other software. Oh yeah. And like, have you been using it a lot? Um, like exclusively or a lot compared to like, I don't know what you, what you came from Photoshop or Paint Tool Sai or Krita. There's so many options out there right now. It's pretty cool actually. Yeah, that makes sense. The brushes, the lighter brushes are pretty good, aren't they? Yeah, same. I, I do like the line art in, um, um, in, in uh, Clip. And then when it's time to color, oh, actually I do the flatting in Clip too, because uh, I really like the tools. Um, but after that, for like the shading and stuff, I uh, I move on over to Photoshop, just because the color tools are, the painting tools are so much better. I feel. Because I also heard from like some artists who are more familiar with um, Clip that um, the, the the color editing tools in uh, the color editing tools in Clip can be. Uh, a little wonky sometimes. Like the levels or something like causing the colors to like totally blow out or something. So are you like, um, did you know my work from before or did you just run across this stream by accident? Wait, you bought what online? The comic? No, oh sorry, I meant like the stream. And the comic, not, I think you were talking about clip. Yeah, exactly. Um, I was talking about um, the comic that I'm drawing right now and my work in general, have you like I'm trying to figure out if you're already familiar with like the work that I'm drawing or uh, if you could still use an explanation if you're curious about what this is. <laughs> All right, so you're like new, new to this, this thing that I'm drawing. Right. 
Well, this thing that I'm drawing right now is um, my comic called Nether Realms. Uh, I've been uh, drawing uh, the comic for only a couple months, but I've been working on the story since 2012. Um, and um, I've been like making an illustration every month for two years or so. And they're all um, they're all on the on the Patreon. Like the the Nightbot just dropped a link in uh, in the chat. I see. Um, and um, yeah, if you click on that link and like take a look, they're all free. Like you don't need to pledge anything. But if you're curious, you can just. Um, take a look to see what it's all about. But um, yeah, I've been making like the illustrations for, for a couple of years and a couple of months ago, I really decided that I wanted to like um, create the story instead of like giving people little bits and pieces all the time. So that's what I'm doing right now. So let me know what you think of uh, of the project if you if you've taken a look. I'll be curious to hear.
Hey, Captain. How's it going? Just chilling. Not drawing any Warhammer at this time. Good. Making some headway with the comic. We were just talking about um, the Clip Studio fiasco. Have you seen it yet? <laughs> Oh, well, Clip um, just announced on, well, whatever, on social media that they were uh, going to use um, uh, AI in their next software update or like the, uh, I'm not sure if it was like for a, like Clip Studio 2 or version 2 or something or only the subscription model or whatever, but um, they said they would include like the stable diffusion model to uh, aid artists in like creating images. <laughs> Naturally, the whole internet went like, what the fuck are you doing? Um, so that was uh, funny. You wouldn't? You don't care about like, uh, uh, I was just saying like um, uh, a couple minutes ago that like, I do, I do think that, that like AI is here to stay, um, but I don't care. I don't agree with like the stable diffusion model where they, they're kind of like, um, using licensed work or like copyrighted work um, and using that to train their model for free. I feel like they should license the artwork that they train their models on. Uh, and Clip is kind of like adding that uh, very controversial model to their software um, that's like for artists, but they're adding a model that like hurts um, they're adding a model that hurts the peop th their consumers, which is like dumb. <laughs> you didn't know what that stable diffusion use uses copyrighted work. Yeah, that's that's like the whole the whole sucky thing about it. Um, like I was having a discussion earlier this summer um, with with like a friend, a colleague of my husband's, who works at like an advertising agency, where they were like, you know, you can just use it internally as a tool, and I was like, yeah, well, I'm I'm not like that worried about it, like for like idea generation, I guess. Even though some ADs are ADs are like coming out of the woodwork saying like, I don't want anything to do with this because it like kind of like, it stunts the idea generation because it also limits limits you to to cherry picking what the AI gives you instead of yet like you 
trying to, you know, generate something with, like, the context in mind. Um, but the issue, uh, the issue I had with it back then is, 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 like, stable diffusion being like, hey, here's a subscription if you want, like, to generate more than 10 images. Um, for like, I don't know, 10 bucks a month or like a couple hundred bucks a month and they can just like have that running and they're training it on all this copyrighted work that we as artists, you know, work really hard on uh, and they get to just take that and, and, and basically like sell that work for money. Um, so it's like if you're going to use my work to train your model, then I want to be compensated for that. Which is what they're already doing for, um, um, for like music, uh, because they're they're like too scared to be like sued into oblivion um, for music um, for music users because it's so it's so commonplace there to be like sued for rights and artists like visual artists don't for some reason. Hey Nika, how are you? I was just ranting away for a second. <laughs> Thanks for coming to say hi. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's about the Clip Studio Paint thing. I was uh, I I'm I'm uh, I'm uh, wondering I'm very curious to see how they'll handle this one. They managed to survive the subscription controversy, but curious to see how this will go. I hope so, honestly. I, I hope they'll uh, they'll back paddle. Like, um, like I said, I don't I don't think they should support um, a model that's making unethical use of like copyrighted um, work, since they're the ones they're the program that's like supposed to help people create that kind of content, and then you know. At one point, if, if the problem gets big enough, um, there will be no one left to create the content they need to train their model in the first place. Right? It's like Jesus Christ. Then invest, invest in 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 your artists. Yeah, it's um, like eventually, if, if if people stop creating, I really do think every everything will start looking the same. I guess I don't know. I'm hoping it's um, I'm hoping it's growing pains, or something. Um, like people are st struggling to figure out. Oh, whoops! I was like, why is nothing happening? Wrong layer. Um, but yeah, I hope uh, I hope it's growing pains and people just like figuring out what to. Uh, what to do, how to work with this. And eventually we'll find some kind of middle ground.
I picked some different music for today. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of like inherent to the, you know, life that um, jobs will change. Um, it's just... I don't know, it's uh, somehow that, that AI generated stuff, it does, it does have merit in some ways, like I've seen AI images that I genuinely thought like looked great, were beautiful, had like amazing color choices. Um, and they're like great to draw inspiration from, but I just saw like um, an argument from um, from someone who wrote, who was like artists like AI artists, let's call them artists, I guess, um, AI prompt writers, <laughs> AI users, let's keep it neutral. Um, they won't know like the struggles, the joys, it becomes a whole different process. Like um, the art of writing a prompt is, is like more like being on the um, it's like you're a client telling an artist what you want them to draw. So it's like basically you're training. If you're, if you want to be like a great AI user, you have to basically train yourself to be like a great client, um, and not a great artist per se. Um, so it's kind of like this weird thing where like you're not worried about you're not training yourself to work on like composition or or anatomy or whatever like it's, it's just it's just the 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 the, um, the comparison is kind of weird in my opinion because it's not it's not the same process at all thanks nika thanks for like dropping by have a good day Yeah, Navy Knight, have you seen the AI making 3D models? That that kind of like blows my mind, honestly, because it's like it's not even in 2D space anymore. It's like in 3D space making models. <laughs> honestly, it, it like blows my mind. It's just, you know, it's like, it's very derivative. So, I mean, like, in a way, I, I do agree with you. Like, I, I do worry that it will take my job. Um, like, what if? What if there? What if there are people out there who just go like, um, give me uh, another realm's character or whatever, and then 
or give me a character in that artist's style and then they never need to commission me. Um, but honestly, I, I do feel like there, new, there needs to be some sort of protection also because, well, like I said before, if, if nobody's able to make a living out of it anymore, then <laughs> um, there's going to be like a lot less art online and a lot, a lot more of the same. Like only companies producing art or something. Um, and then eventually everything would just be, all models will just be trained on the same, the same type of art. Maybe eventually we'll be working for like AI companies drawing images for them to learn from being like salaried AI trainers. All right, I'm gonna take a quick break to get a drink.
and we're back. Hey, Captain, can you like, can you set that icon before your name yourself, like manually? Because I noticed like Ryutsu has one too. That's what it is. So why doesn't Ryutsu have a flower? Interesting. There's so much <laughs> about Twitch for me that's like completely like alien and new. I went to um, Isabel's stream and there was the, like this, uh, this pop-up um, at one point saying like, oh, you can redeem that's why, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I went to Isabel's stream and uh, it said like, oh, you can redeem this and this. So I was like, redeem, okay, fine, whatever. So I clicked it and it was like, it, it played some sound in her stream um, saying like, oh, you're a buck or whatever. I was like, what the f did I just do in somebody else's stream? <laughs> Yeah, same. I'd like a flower too in front of my name. Thankfully, Isabel could laugh about it and could then explain to everybody that I was very new to Twitch and didn't know what I was doing. Right? <laughs> the wildest thing I've ever done. I'm very used to like editing myself though. Like online. When I'm when I'm like typing something, I'll like reread it. A lot um, and see if if it's saying what I want it to say the, the the scary thing I guess about like being live is uh, you're just uh, you're just talking and um, before you know it you've uh, you've said all these things that you have no idea if you said them right or not hey Miko how's it going thanks for joining us How's your dog? Got him home from where? <laughs> from outside okay I was like maybe you dropped him off at like someone else or something to watch him or so your dog just runs around outside in the garden for a while
Oh, right, because you said last time that it was getting cold, right? So he can't stay outside for too long? Too cold for his old bones. You know, I kind of need some dog tags, actually. Really? Thank you. Did you like them? Have you like clicked around in the files? Jeez, man. Hardcore. Thanks a lot. I hope they're useful to you. Do you play elves? Or were you just like being, being supportive? So what did you think? Do you think it was logical the way I set them up? Do you think I'm very smart for like figuring it out how to do that? Great. Glad to hear that. Because I hope people have like a good experience using them once they buy them. I actually saw, um, someone who was like actually creating like a whole web app for um D, D characters like a super like um kind of like hero forge but like a different style more realistic um 
but like less painterly than my style. So it'll still be like a different um, target audience, I think, but it was interesting to see. I think it was in our Discord, actually. Why don't you like Hero Forge? Yeah, it does take some um, some grit to get through all the options. Oh, like so, yeah. I well, that's why I was thinking like the D and D art, like the D and D dress up packs that I do, would be kind of like interesting and like fill kind of like a void, um, because it's like slightly more realistic I guess no not re yeah realistic um but still like painterly basically like my style um instead of like the hero forge style um because like most of the stuff in my kind of style is like portraits portrait generators and not full body full body ones so I figured, you know, this could be useful for some people. Um, but I mean, like, the, the concept of Hero Forge is, like, really powerful, I think. Being able to customize your character like that. The D&D &D pack packs, you mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, I've had like some responses like, whoa, this is so cool. So um, it's more, it's more than I've ever gotten. I've gotten more response on those compared to like any other thing that I've tried to do, except for like my app horse and art book, but that's because there's like a built-in fan base, I guess. <laughs> um, that's the only product that I, that's still the product that I like earned the most on ever. Um, but yeah, the the D and D art packs still get a good reception. So I'll have to see what happens like uh, once I do some more races and classes. Because right now I only have like the Elf Rangers, um, and obviously there are a lot more people playing other things. So. Um, I asked around a bit and like I'll have to uh, tally up the um, um, like the responses somewhere over the coming days and then see if there's like any clear winner on um, which class people seem the most interested in and otherwise I might just do like um, a human fighter uh, for now because that's like also a really popular one. Somebody else suggested like a uh, human wizard as well as really popular. But yeah, we'll see. I'm <laughs> I'm focusing on like the comic and like finishing the. Um, the Patreon campaign first because that's been like wearing me out. Today is like the second to last day. Tomorrow's the last day. And after that I'm like cocooning and uh, just focusing on drawing for a while I think. You like Warforged? <laughs> you mean like instead of D&D &D or what? Oh no, that's a class? Is that a class? I totally sound like an expert right now. Really? Warforged. Oh. 
Oh, that's cool. I don't think that would be a good class for me to do because I'm really bad at drawing robots. Huh, funny. There's so many races and classes that I still don't know about. What are they, um, what are they good at? Like humans are like good all-rounders and so are half-elves I think and like elves are naturally very intelligent but not very wise. If I'm getting that right. So what are Warford's um, like uh, what's their what's their what's their most natural class? It makes so much sense, by the way, that you like robots. <laughs> Oh yeah, artificer stones. Logical. Have you ever played one? Oh well, yeah, I mean, of course, like any race can be anything, but um, it's like, I think you see like a lot of human wizards and a lot of um, I think elf sorcerers and that kind of stuff. So I'm just wondering like what they generally end up as in terms of like natural class affiliation. Man, I I really love like all the all the classes and options and stuff and the more I learn about D and D the more uh I thought it was like a total totally not my thing for a couple of years just because I heard like Dungeons and Dragons like yeah that's too high fantasy for me. I only do like Harry Potter and stuff. Um and then for some reason I started watching Critical Role and got hooked. But I have yet to play a game. Like I, I still haven't haven't played a game, an actual game. I do like Lord of the Rings. I don't know. It's kind of. I guess. I guess when I like first joined like the um, fantasy artist subreddit. Um, I just felt like I'm never going to draw for D&D &D just because I, I I draw more like low fantasy stuff. I liked consuming high fantasy, like one of my favorite um, fantasy stories when I was like growing up was um, Aragon. Um, and like I had friends who like read Lord of the Rings and I tried The Hobbit, it was a bit too uh, descriptive for me. Um, but yeah, I, I like consuming high fantasy. I just never thought I would enjoy drawing it so much. Um, but somehow now I do. No, don't break up. There we go. No, but Lord of the Rings used to be like our Christmas ritual. Um, I used to go to the Turkey, to Turkey um, every winter, like every Christmas break with uh, with my mom, and we would always um, go to the Lord of the Rings um, movie over there. How many movies were there? Three or four? No, three. Right. So it was like a 
a tradition for three years. And then I think once for, for like the f first movie, probably, um, I went another time with like a friend of mine here in Holland just because we love the movie so much that we wanted to see it again in cinemas. It was like I really liked the movies. I never, I never got around to like um, reading the books. A friend of mine did, um, but it took her a while too. And she's usually she was like better at like getting through books than I was. I was uh, I read a lot, but I used to. I still do like I don't I don't finish books that I don't really uh, get through easily. Um, and she was like better about. Um, just getting through the thing um, and she did finish uh, Lord of the Rings but even that took her a while and I just never bothered because I already thought uh, the books were too long-winded. Reading is cringe! No it isn't! Oh my gosh! I love reading. I once um, so you you won't know this, but like Patrick Rothfuss, he does um, the King Killer Chronicles. For those, I was just like sitting. <laughs> You're kidding, okay? Um, I was like sitting on the couch for a whole weekend. I would only stop to eat, have bathroom breaks, and like sleep. And the rest of the week weekend was like spent on the on the couch, just reading, reading, reading through the books as fast as I could because I couldn't get enough of them. They were so uh, the plot was so good for some reason, couldn't let it go. I still have like a lot of favorite books from like my childhood. that like make a made a big impact on me and and like the way I want to tell my stories I actually have you seen um, Sandman on Netflix I'm, I don't, don't spoil it because I am still working through it, um, but it's kind of funny because um, it like, it, have you, were you here when, um, uh, when I was like explaining the story of Nether Realms? Because I was like, I saw the first episode of Salmon and it was like, oh crap, how am I ever going to convince people that? I wrote Nether Realms before I ever saw or read Sandman. Because <laughs> it's like about dreams and they fall asleep as like a pandemic and they get like a sleeping sickness and I was like, okay, well that's Nether Realms, thank you very much. Wait, what's Children of Hurin? Miko.
Yeah, probably. I don't know. There were just like a lot of parallels where uh, also like with like 10,000 people being in hell for like 10,000 years uh, or like being people being 10,000 years old um, and having like a history that suddenly comes up. It was like, oh my gosh, so many parallels. I mean, it's a different target audience, like, Nether Realms is way more... Like, Sandman, everything Neil Gaiman writes is like, it's so... surrealistic, I guess. Um, there was this one scene where it was just like, the, the scene in the cafe where it was like... just thinking, where is this going? Um, and I had like no idea, but um, it had a point eventually, but um, I have that with uh, a lot of like Neil Gaiman's writing from what I've read of it so far, where I think like I'm, I'm, it's, it's probably going somewhere, but it's, it feels so disjointed right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the middle of it, I think, before. <laughs> Like maybe maybe I'm setting myself up for spoilers, but um, uh, I think I'm in the middle of it. I, don't know, I was watching it during lunch. But yeah, it's um, it's like it's really cool storytelling. Like I love it. Um, but there were. I guess, you know, best case scenario, I can just say to people, hey, listen, did you like Sandman? Then there's like a big chance that you'll like Nether Realms too. Uh, yeah, if I'm like, um, uh, if I'm having lunch or something, then I'll watch and then I, you know, I need to go because I'm streaming in five minutes, so. I stop the episode and then just move on again once I have the time. I was just thinking about it yesterday where how Netflix like change really changed the way I uh few episodes. Yeah, I, I I wouldn't have done it before before streaming. Um like I would always like watch full episodes or full movies but now with the streaming I don't know it changed the way I did it like I, I also like watch full episodes um like five episodes at once or whatever and then stop in the middle of one just like one big continuous storyline for me I guess which is why I don't really remember at what point in this like what episode I was at So King's book that is unfinished. A lot of bad things happen. Like what? I think we're past spoiler alerts for uh, for Lord of the Rings. By now. You mean like all the characters end badly? Or bad writing? What do you mean we will never know? Oh, gosh! <laughs> A 
Um, yeah, I don't remember that from the from the uh, from the Hobbit. So his uh, his son's um, writing style was uh, very different, than I guess. Yeah, what the hell, man? Whoa. Do you think his, uh, do you think Tolkien, like, intended it that way? And his dad, and his son just, like, carried out his wishes, or? tragedy I've only read Greek cra Greek tragedies in comic form so far which probably get like softened up a lot but yeah I've heard the stories Have you guys read um, Game of Thrones? I don't know, like, I used to... I used to wait for, like, uh, another new installment, but... I might not even pick up the books anymore if he publishes a new one. Just because I'm so over it. Which one? The, um, uh, what's it called? Children of Hune? Hunin? Hunin? So like a wait, wait oh no it wasn't finished in um, 2007 so it'll be modern illustrations right not like 50s ones yeah I never watched the show the show um, of Game of Thrones like I I tried to I tried for as long as I could to um, Hold out for like the books, and I did it. Didn't want to like. I had images of the characters in my head already, the way they looked, um, and I was trying to preserve those while waiting for um, other books to come out. But I have since given up because um, it wasn't possible. Game of Thrones got too popular, <laughs> too advertised everywhere. So now I have lost my mental image of my own mental image of those characters and I uh, like I said I don't think I'll be p picking up a book anyway so Alan Lee Oh, that looks beautiful. And it's like an illustrated illustrated edition? That's beautiful. So 
funny. The books made me uh, make me really greedy. I I'm almost like tempted to get this, even though I all I know I'll never I'll probably never read the actual thing, but I just want it for like the pretty art to have on my bookshelf. You know what's kind of stupid about this bot? It only talks when everybody's talking anyway, so I actually needed to come up when um, when it's not when there's nobody talking so they get um, some kind of like incentive to actually start talking. Oh really? That's interesting. I was... Well, let me put it like this. I was hooked by like the setting in the first episode. Um, what episode am I on now? Let me check. I am on episode 5. So we'll see, Miko, if uh, if I get the same feeling. How many episodes are there? Uh, Eleven. I don't know. I think it has already too similar, too many similarities um, with um, um, with Nether Realms for me to like not be intrigued by it. Um, So I do care more about like the fantasy realm than the real realm. It just if it, the writing feels very Neil Gaiman. Like um, I I I uh, read. Uh, what's the one? It's like Good and Evil. That was like I think it was co-written with Terry Pratchett. Um, Oh, 
What was it called? Good Omens. Yes, thank you. Um, so I read Good, Good Omens and it just feels, it feels so similar in terms of writing um, that I find it like recognizable. Um, so I kind of like know what to expect in that sense, but we'll see. So Captain, do you like have, oh wait, so you do ha already have a story and stuff? And characters, do you have any, any art for it? Oh yeah, that could be true, Miko, that Sandman works better as a comic book. I love that we're having two conversations at the same time right now. Man, I really miss a um, feature in the Twitch chat saying, like, if somebody's writing or not. Because I have no idea if, if everybody's just, like, falling silent or if people are typing. Oh, there we go. Yeah, um, I had the exact same problem, Kevin. Like, um, did you, wait, I'll show you my first but ugly experiments. Um, let's see, what was the first one? This. These were my first experiments, but it's just like, I think it's, 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 it sounds really corny. Just get started. Um, but it's, it's an, it's an issue that I uh, have like really often where, um, at least I have it very often myself that I, I have like an idea in my head, but I'm not sure how it translates to, to like the real world. Um, so, uh, but it, it, you never like figure out, doing these pages helped me figure out that I do not want to do line work for backgrounds and that it doesn't fit my art style and my like aesthetic. Um, but I never would have known had I not spent time on this stuff, um, trying to make it work and failing to make it work. Um, so, you know, like, if, if you, if you're motivated, like, if you, if you do think like, oh, I, I do want to get started on that sometime, 
um, I would say like just make some tests like do a small part of your take a small part of your script and like write it into a comic page and just do some tests and uh, do like one or two test pages and just try it out see what see what works for you and see what doesn't um, Because yeah, like like I said, a lot of it is just like trying it out and then um, experiencing uh, what it is to make a comic. Because um, it is like a long project, obviously. Like unless you can write like shorts, but you could also well, you could also like um, try try a short story. Like I'm I'm assuming I'm just assuming that it's gonna be like a long story. Is that it's gonna take a long time to take time to like, actually produce so maybe just start with like a really short story maybe a side story that you can finish in like maybe 10 pages or something um, try making that and then see how you feel about it to make it like less daunting I guess if you ever want to like talk about it or like show the script or talk about the characters or talk about like ma making the actual comic then feel free to hit me up i'd love to talk about it miko why didn't you <laughs> like any of your work what, what do you mean like do you did you not like technically like it or did you not like the characters like their personalities and did you not want to write them further or um, did you end up not, not liking the setting? That's really interesting. You hear uh, a lot of times people get too, uh, too attached to their stuff. Yeah, just do a test, like... Otherwise, it's forever going to be some kind of mystical, I don't know what to do. And you won't get to explore the world or what it is to make the comic. If you even like the process or if you maybe prefer to like make a film out of it or make... Um, maybe an illustrated book out of it, like, um, uh, what's that book called? I think, didn't James Gurney, let me check, the dinosaur book. Yeah, Dinotopia. Do you know about that one? It's uh, it's something I like when I thought, oh, I'm not gonna make a comic. I thought, oh, I will um, make something like Di Dinotopia, where it's like an illustrated book. I think um, Naomi Van Doren, she also has her book. Naomi Van Doren, that's her book. It's gotta be somewhere. Books. Naya and the Fox Dragon, there we go. Also an illustrated novel. And of course there's like a... Um, there's a, the, the book that Miko just said, I keep forgetting the Children of... Children? Children? Sure, that's that's what it was. Oh yeah, amigo, that's um. I guess it's tough if you're if if you don't have like the patience with yourself. <laughs> 
to go out. Are you writing in English or are you writing? I'm, I, I'm assuming that you have like a different native language. Yes, that one. Thank you. How do you plan out a page or a scene? So, well, I mean, a scene... So, um, I went to this... Um, um, this story writing conference back in 2016. And um, they taught me the basic um, structure of a Western type of story. Um, that basic structure you probably know it well. Um, it goes, there once was. And, uh, uh, let's see, there was once, and every day, until one day, and then, and then, until one day, and ever since that day. That's the basic structure of a story, of a Western story. Um, use that, and you can write anything you want. Now, once you have that down, uh, that's basically how I uh, how I wrote Nether Realms. Uh, I hold on, that's me putting my pen in my in my mouth. Um, so I have like the script done. I will show you this scene. Um, So this is like the the script. Yeah, this is the, the script. I, I kind of wrote it like a movie um, scene. And, um, or I, I mean a movie script and like I'm, now I'm kind of like adapting it um, to a, um, what's it called? Comic script as I go. I want this one to change, not that one. This is called Scrivener, by the way. Um, it's amazing uh, software to like write your story just because you get to like um, move this stuff around so you can like write story beats and then you just move it around as you want. Um, but yeah, um, once I have that, I write it out into a script per panel. This this isn't this isn't sacred like. Once I um, have this down, I, um, uh, I, I, I like I like scribble it down and then change it up as I as I need. 
Scrivener is, I will give you a link. I bought it like ages ago. It's like script writing software or like book writing software, whatever you want. Um, and so, like I said, what I like is it, it really lets you write down all the story beats. Um, and it lets you like rearrange them, but it also, it's it's like kind of like a database only for, for like your writing because it lets you rearrange all the bits and pieces that you write. Um, and it lets, you, it lets you color code them and organize them. So all the red ones are like the, the once upon a time the main story beats that I um, that I wrote with, that I started with. Um, so here you can see like until one day, this is once upon a time. Um, and then because of this, because of this, because of this, blah, 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 going through the story, etc. Um, and then I like elaborated from there. Um, so once I have this, like the page written out. I use, hold on, let me grab this. I make a storyboard. This is the storyboard. Um, which is just like nine empty, or nine, uh, 12 empty um, thingamajiggers. I, co I copy the script out here and I group them Kind of like a feeling. <laughs> I, I, I decide how many panels I want on based on a feeling. Um, I'm not sure. You, uh, I guess um, you kind of want like a cliffhanger at the end of every page. Um, so for example here, like the twins appear in front of Sam, um, which is like a cliffhanger going on to the next page. Um, and it also, I think, uh, my teacher in the course that I did on in, back in March said you can usually like fit one or two sentences like de descriptive sentences on a page so for example like a, a, a man um, walks onto the street almost dies and uh, suddenly sees two people standing before him like that's basically a page um, but then they try like he tries to bargain with them that would be an, a different page because you would need like a different sentence to describe that um i'm actually i had like a lot of panels per page uh in this scene usually uh because this was like eight panels and then this was four six six five seven seven five and so in this scene i experimented with having um, less panels per um, per page. Um, so I um, I ended up with more pages, basically. Um, but it also made it more. Um, it gives you more space to like write out the actions, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's how I decide uh, how to, you know, how to divide up the script into pages. Um, and so once I do that, I, um, I like divide up, see, so see, you can see here already on like the first page that I did eight panels at first, like I wrote eight panels into the script, but then I decided when I was storyboarding, like, no, I'm going to keep um, this, um, uh, these two lines together just because it makes sense to, like, show that, show that in one panel, in one action. Um, so I storyboard this out. I don't worry about the paneling yet. Um, and then once I have that done, it's like scribbles. I just want to get, like, a camera angle in there, an action, how I'm going to show this, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, like, I guess 
the the general um, idea is also like the larger a panel is, the more time it takes in um, in the story. In the sense that like if there's like a really long panel, it would be a pretty long shot in a movie. Um, so like establishing shots that are a bit bigger, um, they would like be like draw. They would take they would take like two seconds or whatever, and then a really short panel would take like half a second. Um, so when there's like a lot of action going on, like a fighting scene, um, then you know all the punches would be like really short, like really small panels. And then if um, if there's like there's like one panel where um, I have drawn. Let me see. No, not that one. This one. There are no pages. Why are there no pages? Oh, because it's the wrong. Side. Older. Uh, finish up. There we go. So, for example, um, in this page, like this is like Nergui, the main character, being like, "Oh crap, what's got coming at me?" So this is a, like a bit of a larger panel, and then there's her um, realizing, like, "Oh my God, it's coming at me." Um, and you see two flashes of it coming closer to her, so those are like small panels, and then she's getting saved by Zara, um, which is like, w which would be like, oh, time stopped because, or like, um, I saw my life flash before my eyes, kind of like that kind of um, vibe. So it's like a large panel to take up a lot of space and also a lot of time. Um, so once I um, have like these panels sketched out, um, I will, hold on, let me go back to that folder, um, paneling, what, on the page or, or the, the process, um, where is it? Huh, I thought I had more notes on. Oh, right. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, I guess I'll just... Um, mark this in then. So basically here, once I have this storyboard, um, I go and look and um, here I obviously, obviously thought like, okay, so this is a moment. Um, he's crossing the street. Uh, nothing's going on yet. And then here, this is like the long uh, panel um, where um, he gets like in trouble, obviously. So this one is like a whole line um, by itself. And then um, let's see. Uh, close like a rain bag, but the hit never comes. Yeah, so I think I kind of like grouped this together, which is why it's um, three panels beneath each other. And then there's like this one big one. Um, so you kind of like group those. Um, and then you can, so these are basically like new lines in the page. So if you have like a page like this, um, this would be, you know, there, there, there there and then of course with this I kind of like tried something else where I um, had the, the three panels on one line um, beneath each other but you're basically like grouping them together uh, which is like how you group them go away Um, and the same goes for this one, yeah. Where is it? Mark up. There we go. Dinner. Go with dinner. Thank you. So here I group this one where Red is like introducing himself and then they're like talking about it and then Sam hears, oh he's gonna die. Um, so I group those. These are gonna be on one line together. This is going to be its own line, and this is going to be its own line. Um, so that's kind of how I decide on the paneling. And then you want to 
there's like things you want to keep in mind, um, which is kind of like the, the, the exercise that we got during the course was also to um, do the, the, the dividing of the panels and then trying a few different approaches on the page for them. Um, so um, you could like approach it like this, actually the, uh, well, I guess you can show it like this, but you could approach it like this, but you could also like make one big panel here and then group the next two like this and then have the one big panel here. Um, or you could hmm, take this and then maybe, you know, if it were like more like an anime style comic, you could maybe go like this and then have, I don't know, if, if it's like an action scene, like have a panel go like this and then there's like one big panel behind here, you know, with like the, the guy being, Sam being like shocked. Um, so, um, yeah, it's like the basic grouping and then uh, you go to like experiment, but then at least you have some kind of like basics to, to start with. Um, so that's how I learned it, how I approached like the page making. But, you know, it's just like the style thing, it's um, trial and error. Um, it's, um, it's like getting a feel for it. Um, the, the teacher that like did the demos in the course that I did. Um, hey Miko, welcome back. Um, the, the teacher, like he was able to just do like a super rough sketch. Um, like basically he would take, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There we go. He would take like this sketch, this sketch, this kind of sketch, and then draw over it. Um, and he would be able to like uh, make finished line art out of this kind of sketch. Um, but that's just like practice and, you know, doing it a lot, as is everything, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. Yeah, you're welcome. Like. It's fun to talk about this kind of stuff, isn't it? It's really interesting to talk about these kinds of processes. So Miko, I'm um, um, like, I explained some stuff. Um, I will be putting this, um, the video, the VOD should um, uh, should be up like I'll publish it like directly after after I finish the stream, um, so you can like watch it back and see all the stuff I explained if you're interested. Yeah, I um, it sounds you know, Captain. It sounds like you're having like a lot of the same struggles that I did before I started. Um, you can also like, just like figure out a way to do it your way, you know? Like if you don't do line art, then do it differently. Maybe like keep it really sketchy or um, do it really painterly, something, something like that. Or like I said, maybe consider uh, doing like an illustrated book instead of, um, whoops, time for a break. Yeah, let's take a break. Um, but you could uh, make an illustrated book instead of um, uh, doing like a whole comic. I'm taking a break. They're just like away from the screen, by the way, but I'll be like, I won't be away. I won't be AFK, just taking a break, giving my arms a rest.
Welcome back. I'm back too. You know, and honestly, like, I was thinking about what you were saying. Um, I'm still figuring out a lot of stuff as well as I go. <laughs> um, you know what I was, I was thinking about, like, how I'm still not really sure how I, how I want to draw red and blue's butts. Because um, they have, like, kind of weird anatomy on the, it's kind of like, you know, otherworldly, non-human, whatever, and I'm still not sure, like, if I want their um, hips and stuff to be, like, really narrow or, you know, normal human-like. Um, and I still want to, like, develop a lot in my inking and that kind of stuff, but I figured starting to tell the story right now is, like, more important to me than making the perfect comic right away. Um, so I figured I would just, I think my skills are good enough right now for people to understand the story. Um, it's never going to be perfect anyway, so why wait? If I can find some kind of middle ground that makes it like doable and like good enough for people to understand and make it really sexy, yeah. <laughs> I'll give them sexy butts. I don't know, man. I don't want him to be. S well, I'd like. I think I'd like red to be. I think red is like a sexy guy, but um, I don't think blue. Um, is the type of character to be really sexualized? Honestly, I I haven't. It's kind of funny because uh, a lot of. Um, writers like um, declare their character's sexuality really quickly like oh he's bi or he's straight or he's queer or whatever um, and I'm like oh I never really thought of that for a lot of my characters I, I <laughs> they basically only have like a, a sexual preference um, if if they need to be like parents for for a character or whatever but most of them I haven't really thought about it. Yeah, that's true. Maybe I should um, make Red um, work for me. If he's not going to earn his keep as a comic character, then... Was that you that got, like, warned? Yeah, that's why you're making that joke. That was <laughs> that really weird warning, like, beware of all the furries throwing their money at you. Like, okay. Sorry for earning money. It's not that important if it's not a romance comic. If it is some kind of like romance genre, then it might be pretty important, obviously. But yeah, I like in the story, I don't, I don't feel like um, any preference was was all that important. It doesn't romance doesn't really really play a lot of a big uh, big role in the in the story except for like two characters because they 
made my main character. Um, so I didn't really focus on it too much. Though of course like um what was I going to say? Like knowing tidbits about the character. For example, I know like my uh, my main character's dad is a really good cook and I know um, like his job um, and how he was able to get such a nice apartment in the city um, it does kind of like deepen out the character for me even though it's never gonna be important in the story at this point maybe for a spin-off <laughs> Ah, oh, Miko, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry the furries aren't throwing money at you yet. Because you deserve it. You don't want to draw furries? <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't think I wanted to either. Um, but here I am, drawing owls and dogs on my own behest for almost nothing. I guess it, for me, I just like the um, surrealist aspect that it adds to the characters. But yeah, at this point I wouldn't say no to money either. Though I would be worried about drawing um, animals for money at this point, honestly. <laughs> Most animals. I feel like I still need some practice in that regard. Although I did draw a hyena. What am I talking? What am I saying? I can draw animals for like a book cover. Funny how you can really like some really specific bits of the of an of an illustration. I really like somehow how this hand is like leaning on the floor. Oh dear, now I need to figure out how to draw this pattern in the folds.
I actually thought I never like used lines or inks or whatever before. Um, and that was actually one of the most enjoyable parts of the process for me. So goes to show how things can change. really quickly because I I didn't think I could ink stuff maybe I don't know a year ago Whenever I draw these characters' feet, I have to think about um, the creator of Hellboy and how he never wanted to draw feet, so he avoided it as much as he could. As much as he could. And then I started paying attention to it, and I was like, "Holy crap! He never." He actually never, he managed to always like somehow hide them away. Two more pages inked. What did I? I probably forgot some details. Yes, like the terms.
time for some flatting.
All right, guys. I think it's time for me to go and make dinner. Yeah, din din time. Thanks for keeping me company. And uh, don't forget to uh, show me your own, <laughs> show me your own comic uh, plans, Captain. Thanks. Thanks for saying it looks lovely. I, I honestly, I feel like um, my inking has um, in improved a lot over the past 10, 20 pages already. So, um, yeah, yeah, like and subscribe. <laughs> Hit that bell and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but yeah, I'll... Uh... <laughs> Man, that's hilarious. All right, so thanks for hanging out. Um, thanks for asking questions and keeping me company. And um, it was fun to talk to you guys. So I will see you later. Have a good night. <laughs>